This is part two of a very important article written by an Air Force colonel who is warning Americans of the atmospheric spraying and the coming collapse. If you have not heard the first part, go to my channel and you will see the same title, only it says part one. So part two, I pick up with this paragraph. Many reasons have been given in regard to the purposes of these flights. Reasons have included such things as reduction in global warming, redirection of violent weather patterns to safer locations, an aid to military communications, a defense against enemy radar and satellite surveillance and reconnaissance. Another frequently cited reason has to do with controlling the weather of other countries particularly those in which we have troops involved in conflicts. There were also many reasons given in the FEMA Walmart conspiracy. For example, these stores have been closed because of multiple simultaneous plumbing problems. To repair those plumbing problems, FEMA had portable guard towers strategically in the parking lots of some stores, complete with searchlights and acoustic assault speakers or the fact that the closings and modifications began during Operation Jade Helm 15. Despite their unmistakable presence and coverage patterns, no viable or credible reasons have been given for them. Reasons that have been given are at variance from one another and seem to skirt the facts that these chemical and biological agents are demonstrably and extremely dangerous to the health of humans and animals and plants. The effects on animal life, fish, birds perhaps, the mysterious drastic decline in the bee population, and agriculture have been nothing short of disastrous. Perhaps you have seen some of the photographs of thousands upon thousands of dead fish lining our coastline, or a coastline, or dead birds covering fields, roads, homes, and yards. To me, this is an example of the military industrial government complex that we have been forewarned about repeatedly for decades, operating at its best and most efficient with no interruptions, interference, or objections from the people that this affects most profoundly, American citizens. I believe that regardless of one's theological beliefs, and I am certainly no biblical scholar, Scripture asks questions that seem particularly salient now. Do you have ears, but do not hear? Do you have eyes, but do not see? In my field, we make a distinction between listening and looking, passive behaviors, and hearing and seeing, active behaviors, often requiring hard work. We have been warned repeatedly by several presidents over the decades about this unholy alliance. However, for whatever reasons, we have failed to pay attention to these alerts, and we certainly failed, as citizens living in a republic, to act on them. Now we are seeing the consequences of our inattention and lack of involvement in our governments, and no one is more guilty than I. So rather than being allowed to express our wills by means of the initiative or the referendum as provided by the Constitution on such significant issues as the construction of over 800 FEMA camps, some equipped with recently expanded crematoria, the conversion of closed military installations into detention centers, passage of the Patriot Act and the National Defense Authorization Act, the formation of an out-of-control Department of Homeland Security, and its purchase of over two billion rounds of hollow point, or anti-personnel ammunition, which contrary to what Department of Homeland Security told us, is not for target practice, or construction of underground, multi-level interstate highways which run from Denver International Airport to Washington, D.C., to Maine, with multiple diverging routes between these points, a high-speed underground railroad, 
and over 100 underground cities complete with ample long-term supplies of food, water, medical supplies, even operating suites. We passively allowed these things to come into being. We and our Congress were effectively bypassed or short-circuited by a president who unilaterally enacted a series of illegal executive orders, which no one questioned, and no one questions still, a president who in all likelihood does not meet the criteria specified in our Constitution for someone to hold that office legally, a president who, when not self-constrained, exhibits unmistakable symptoms of meg megalomania, the ability of the people to be able to vote on these kinds of issues takes on additional importance when one considers that our elected representatives in Washington are no longer there to represent us or our best interests. My personal opinion is that they are motivated principally by greed for wealth and power. If you are deluding yourself that writing letters to these elected representatives will in any way make a difference, please stop and apply your thinking, actions, and words in more productive approaches. A colleague once expressed it. We are playing baseball. They are playing football. The effect then is that there is in reality no, no longer a Republican or a Democratic Party. There is one party, and it is not accountable to the It operates entirely in concert with the stated goals of the United Nations Agenda 21 or Agenda 2025 or Agenda 2030 and the Illuminati's fundamental tenets, which include a one world government and religion, the new world order, and massive depopulation. And I apologize, Snagit has just given me the warning again, so I'm going to stop here, and it's going to take as many videos as it's going to take to get this article posted. So part three is coming up.